name is Dr Zanthi Mallet and I'm a forensic scientist and criminologist. I live in Australia, in Sydney, after moving here from the UK in 2012 where I was working in Dundee. The main work that I do here is looking at human identification, which basically means when somebody dies, we try and learn as much as we can about them so that we can name them, because sometimes people die in circumstances where they don't have any paperwork or somebody doesn't know who they are. So scientists have to come up with ways of actually finding out about that person so that we can look at the missing person's records and find out who they were. My work is basically founded in biology. I'm interested in the biological systems of the body and how they actually break down as soon as somebody's died. And it starts to happen really very quickly. So I focus on the hands and face for my projects and that's because these are the two areas when you're trying to identify somebody that are the most relevant. We look at people's faces and we recognise them via their faces. So understanding how you can take a skull, for example, and build somebody's face back onto that to get a likeness of their image in life so that you can put that out in the media to identify them is critical. One of the most exciting things that I'm working on at the moment is we have a new facility just on the outskirts of Sydney where we will actually be looking at how people decompose after they've died. There have been sites in America, I think there's currently seven, that look at these type of sciences. And actually, it's not just about the body itself. We look at the chemistry, we look at heat signatures. We have scientists interested in cadaver dog detection, scent detection, working on ways to actually find people alive and deceased. So there are many, many people working together, including police forces, trying to gather as much information as we can, scientific information, to help identify deceased people. Now there are seven sites in the US, we've just opened our first one here, and I'm gonna be out at the size site taking measurements, taking photographs, um, people will be looking at the entomological activity, so what the bugs are doing out there. So this is really a very exciting time in forensic science in Australia. We're gonna collect all of this data to really find out what happens to people in an Australian environment. And that's really, really important because in different environments, different things happen to tissues of the body. The point being to help give these people back to their families by naming them. So what I'm going to be doing when I have my donors and everyone has donated their bodies to this project, I will be actually measuring how much tissue is lost off the face on a daily basis. And that means when we find a skull in the desert or wherever in Australia, we can actually look back at how much tissue has been lost over a period of time. I'm going to be using time-lapse photography to capture that in detail, as well as a scanner which actually measures how much tissue is left between the outside and the, the bones. The other area I'm looking at are the hands. And the hands are important because of your fingerprints. Now your fingerprints are actually, they develop when you're a fetus in the womb. They're unique. Each of your fingers is different and that's because they develop individually in, when you're in your mum's tummy, basically. So even if you've got identical twins, each one of your fingers, your 20 fingers between the two twins, is slightly different because it's affected by the environment in the, fe in the fetal environment. So, understanding more about how quickly those fingerprints are lost is important for fingerprint experts. So I'm working with police and along with scanning the face, we're going to be looking at how quickly all of the tissue is lost off the fingers and the palm of the hands to determine at what point you couldn't get fingerprints anymore from a skeleton that's found in the wilderness somewhere in Australia. This is really cutting edge science because up until now, we've had a lot of information coming out of the US because scientists all the time are being asked to help the police identify these unknown individuals. But we've had to base our analyses on the information that's, that's US based and that's not really ideal. So this is very cutting edge. We've got a lot of people doing a lot of work in all of the basic sciences, the, the chemical analysis of scent. Is it different in Australia than it is in America? Well, I don't know at the moment, but I'll be able to tell you that in a few years' time when we've done all of that data collection. So it's a very exciting time. We're the first country to have one of these sites for human study 
of decomposing remains outside of America. And it's going to be a very exciting time with a lot of information that we can then compare with the US. And I guarantee that this is going to help identify individuals in not very long at all. In the next few years, we're going to be solving more crimes and more deaths as a result of the work that we've begun today.